Hi guys, it's Ricky Bill. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you my brand new custom computer build. Uh, it's actually the first time I've ever built a custom computer. And uh, God is my witness, I will never build another. Just kidding. I actually had a really good time, um, learned a lot. And so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Guys, this is my brand new $2,000 computer build. Um, as you can see, it has a beautiful case and all of the latest and greatest hardware. Um, just kidding. This is actually the reason for my new computer build. I purchased this computer over four years ago, which uh, you know is a lifetime of computer years. Um, it has an Intel Q9300 quad core, um, and I've never had to make any upgrades. It was able to do anything, you know, that I asked of it until just recently. Uh, my frame rate was slowing down, um, especially when running more intensive uh, graphic programs. And then the fan on the GPU started making noise. And so I knew it was getting ready to fail. So I decided to install a new graphics card. And uh, that, in turn, needed a um, new power supply. So I upgraded from the original little puny 400 watt power supply to a new 600 watt thermal take PSU and then upgraded from the original uh, NVIDIA 8800 GT to a new GTX 550 Ti. So, uh, no more noisy fan, but uh, guess what? The uh, performance um, increase was basically zero. Okay? So, just a waste of money. So, I decided uh, time to build my own rig, and um, anyway, so uh, here it is. Enough about the old, uh, enough about the old rig. Panning the camera around, and there it is. All right. Uh, originally, I told myself this was going to be a, uh, you know, seven to uh, eight hundred dollar computer build, <clears throat> but it was, um, you know, it quickly escalated up to the point where it is now, about uh, about two thousand dollars. So um, hmm. it's a lot more than I was planning on spending, but um, uh, you know what? I'm actually very happy with it. So anyway, uh, let's get to it. Uh, this is the uh, NZXT Phantom 410. It's a mid-tower case. Um, even though it is a mid-tower, um, it's very roomy inside. Um, now, I did have to make a modification to the top of the case with a pair of sheet metal snips in order to fit in the pump and the radiator for the water cooling that I've installed in this case. Um, I made a mistake and cut out a little more metal than I needed to. Um, I'll show you all my mistake when we take the uh, case apart. Oh, and as you can see, it's um, the case is pretty bright, even with uh, the lights on and it's still daylight outside. With uh, just show you what it looks like with the lights off, it's even uh, it looks uh, looks even better with the lights out. I think, but uh, there it is. So. Uh, all right, I'm gonna move the camera around to the front and we'll uh, continue on from there. Okay guys, here we are with a uh, frontal view of the case. And um, you see behind this door um, is a uh, Asus uh, Blu-ray burner. And um, we have a couple of um, expansion bays uh, there's no window or anything on the right hand side of the case at the bottom on the front of the case is a 120 millimeter cooler master fan on the top of the case we have a power button and we have a reset button okay we have a headphone jack here on the top we have a microphone jack we have four USB ports right here. 
two of which are the new uh, USB 3.0 ports these two right here okay above them we have a fan speed slider it actually has three positions it's not really a slider it's uh, low medium and high and then <clears throat> here on the top we have two 120 millimeter fans that are mounted to the radiator um, I replaced uh, the fans that came with the radiator with these uh, AeroCool Sharp fans. Um, I really love the AeroCool fans. They are almost completely quiet and extremely powerful. Um, the 120 millimeter fans uh, actually produce um, they actually produce 83 CFM cubic feet per minute each fan. Okay, um, so. Uh, pretty powerful fans and they are really really quiet um, later I'll put the microphone right up to these fans I mean these fans are running right now and you cannot hear them they are extremely quiet so anyway uh, let's move around to the left hand side of the computer and um, see what we have over there okay guys here we are back on the uh, left hand side of the computer and here on this panel you can see I uh, actually installed a 140 millimeter AeroCool Shark fan and um, that fan actually produces um, 97 cubic feet of air it actually moves 97 cubic feet of air per minute which is <laughs> it's pretty amazing when you're looking at a fan like that so it moves a lot of air it's also um, extremely quiet and um, can't say enough about those fans okay and uh, you know what while we're on uh, you know while we're talking about uh, fans uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about the airflow scheme I'm using for this case um, I'm using a uh, push-pull uh, method in that I'm uh, drawing air in from the top uh, the front and the side and exhausting it out the back so in other words we are pulling air in from the top going this way through our radiators we are pulling air in from the front through this fan and you can't see it right now but there's actually another fan right in behind this fan in here that is also pulling air through this way through the front and then I'm also pulling air through the front uh, through the side right here so we're pulling air in through the top, through the front, through the side, and then this fan right here in the back is exhausting it all. And this fan in the back is also a um, AeroCool Shark fan. So that is how we are moving the air around in this particular case. Okay, so now what we'll do is um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this side panel here and we'll take a look at uh, what we've got inside this unit okay guys here we are looking inside the case and um, we will just start from the bottom and uh, work our way up here we have our power supply which is a thermal take black widow 850 watt power supply okay next over here it might be hard to see is our western digital green uh, it's one terabyte hard drive spinning hard drive just above that I know you're not going to be able to see but small and back in here is actually our solid state drive it's your OCZ vertex 3 120 gig and we use that for um, use that for my operating system and anything that I use mo most often I'll keep on the um, solid state drive and keep everything else on the uh, spinning hard drive here okay next our video cards as you can see here we've got two NVIDIA GTX 580 cards made by EVGA uh, they are running in SLI as you can see this jumper right here okay next uh, is our memory you see we've got two sticks of memory here on our motherboard they are the Kingston HyperX Blue eight gig sticks and we've got two of them right there okay 
Uh, next uh, is our CPU, which is actually hidden behind this uh, water block. Um, but it is the Intel Core i7 2600K. The uh, K giving us the ability to do some overclocking and stuff like that. Okay. And then, of course, that, uh, that processor is, uh, is connected to the uh, motherboard. It's a Gigabyte GA-768XP-UD3. And this motherboard was a uh, recommended buy through Tom's Hardware. Um, I really like this motherboard. The BIOS has got some really nice features. Um, you're able to do some, it's got, it comes with some really cool overclocking uh, software. And you're able to monitor just everything on here. CPU temperature. Um, I've actually got the, uh, the fans on the radiator are actually pulse width modulated through a connection on the motherboard. So these fans will respond to temperature of the uh, actual CPU temperature. These fans will actually speed up and slow down. These fans are not connected with the rest of the fans and they're connected directly to the motherboard. Uh, there's a lot of nice things. I really like this motherboard. So um, that's that. The next thing to talk about is this right here. What we have is the SwiftTech uh, H20-200 Edge water cooler. And what we have is, of course, we talked about earlier, there's a radiator underneath, underneath this right here with two fans. That radiator has a reservoir at one end and a pump at the other end. And they are connected to the radiator. They are not, cannot separate them. And so what happens is we come out of the pump. We go through our water block, cooling our CPU out of our water block, back up through the radiator, through the radiator, back to the pump, and the circuit happens all over again. Gives us the ability to run a nice, cool uh, processor and for overclocking abilities. It's a really nice kit. Um, it comes with everything you need. It comes with the hose, it comes with the clamps, it comes with the radiator, the fans. Even though I actually uh, I upgraded the fans, uh, I wasn't too crazy about the fans that it came with, so um, we talked about that earlier also, upgraded the fans. The other really cool thing about this is it has a very high quality water block. This is the Apogee HG water block. It's a very high quality water block. Um, you can check the reviews on this thing. It is a, it's the, it's a very nice water block, um, high quality. And a really cool thing about this is, and hopefully you can see in here, that there are two extra ports that are actually capped off right now. But in the future, if I wanted to do an upgrade, it would be easy enough for me to cool my GPUs simply by adding two fittings and a couple more hoses to a couple of GPU water blocks. Um, as you know, uh, when you start overclocking the GPUs, temperature gets temperature can really go up there. Even with all the fans that I have in this in this case, um, you know, overclocking can really raise the temperatures. So that may be a future upgrade. Um, I would like to do that. Um, and this, this kit gives you the ability to do that. A lot of these water cooler kits that you buy uh, do not have that ability. Uh, they're not going to have the extra ports to come out of the water block so that you're not having to run all your water cooling in series, which really slows down the water flow from the pump. So this is a really, really great kit. It comes with everything you need um, to give you some really good water cooling. All right, the next thing we're going to see is I'm going to take this top off and we're going to take a look at the radiator, the pump, and the reservoir. Okay, uh, guys, here we are. We're going to take the top off. Um, there's no screws or anything. It just snaps off. I just snapped the front of it off. Same deal. There's no screws or anything like that. And the top just snaps off just like this. No screws. And now we're taking a look I'm making a shadow here, but we're taking a look at the top here, and we are seeing the radiator and uh, fans, the reservoir, and the pump. Here we have a reservoir. This is the uh, filling port. This little screw comes out here, that little cap. Uh, we have the two fans here. Over here, this is our pump right here and so this is we're looking at the top of the radiator 
these fans just screw right down onto some pre-drilled holes on the radiator and um, it just screws together and um, what I did was I got a little couple some angle here and uh, made some little angles to kind of hold this in place but um, as you can see here I went a little crazy with the uh, sheet metal snips uh, I was originally going to try to mount this further down this way but um, some stuff in the way in the bottom here so I ended up having to uh, rethink how I was going to mount this uh, plus we're right up against this uh, our USB ports and our fan speed controller and stuff over here but um, it fits in there um, originally um, there was like two cutouts here for a couple of hundred and, I think 120 millimeter fans and um, so what you basically had to do was just take some snips sheet metal cutters and just cut this all out right here, cut this all out in the top and then set the radiator down in there. So the radiator extends down inside here, um, inside the case and it sits uh, fairly, the top of the radiator sits fairly flush with the top of the case. But um, like I said before, it's a really great kit and it will all fit inside of this mid tower case. It just create, uh, just had to do a little modification. And uh, I guess, uh, like the old saying goes, you measure twice and cut once. So I got a little extra hole here that not necessary. But um, well, that's it, guys. Um, that's everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, leave any comments, and uh, I will try to answer them as soon as I can.